Thank you for joining us for this special webinar series highlighting the new 2014 research grants funded by the AKC Canine Health Foundation. In all, 17 grants were approved, totaling nearly $1.5 million for canine health research. These projects cover 10 unique areas of canine health. In each of the short videos in this series, CHF's Chief Scientific Officer, Dr. Sheila Nordone, explains the proposed work, significance, and impact for each grant, and how these projects will work together to move canine health forward so that all dogs can live longer, healthier lives. We hope you find these webinars to be informative and exciting. Please visit www.akcchf.org forward slash donate to show your support for our funded research. In this session, Sheila will be discussing our new grants within the Oncology Research Program area. As most of you know, oncology is our largest research program area. Right now we have 35 active oncology grants and these grants cover a very broad array of concerns within oncology and the dog from molecular mechanisms of disease to enhanced treatment and enhanced diagnosis of disease. And we're providing you with a link to our full cancer portfolio rather than going into every single one of the grants that we have funded. And we're just going to hit the major highlights of what we funded this year. But our current portfolio is at www.akcchf.org backslash slash cancer dash portfolio. The first new grant that I want to talk about is grant 2071. This is funded through our Oak Oncology Program. Development of a therapeutic brain tumor vaccine. Principal investigator is Dr. Liz Pluhar, University of Minnesota, and the total grant amount is $130,572. The focus of Dr. Pluhar's grant is, is meningiomas. Meningiomas are the most common primary brain tumor in dogs. This, this, these tumors affect more than 10,000 dogs in the United States annually, most frequently in older dogs and in certain breeds, golden retrievers, Labrador retrievers, boxers, German shepherd dogs, and collies. And the, the meningiomas manifest themselves cells through uncontrolled, generalized grand mal seizures. Standard treatment is surgery and radiation, and unfortunately, recurrence is usually within one year of surgery. So Dr. Pluhar is building on an immunotherapy protocol that she developed previously for dogs with gliomas. And she recently assessed this strategy in a pilot study where she treated meningiomas with a tumor lysate vaccine, so stimulating the dog's own immune system to turn against the tumor. Data from the, the pilot study showed that this approach was safe and feasible. It was possible to do this. And in the current grant, she proposes to, to do a large clinical trial in which she'll treat 30 dogs with meningioma by surgery alone, which is the standard protocol right now for treating meningiomas, or treat them with surgery followed by treatment with this tumor lysate vaccine. The deliverables from Dr. Pluhar's grant, she expects to see a specific immune response to the vaccine that will prevent tumor recurrence. She expects to generate data that will provide proof of safety and efficacy of using this vaccine-based therapy to support a broad use of this vaccine in dogs with meningiomas and also hopefully to initiate a phase one trial for high grade and recurrent meningioma in humans. Now I want to tell you about two exciting grants we funded this year through the Canine Health Foundation Golden Retriever Foundation Cancer Collaborative. The first grant is 1889 Innovations in Prevention, Diagnosis and Treatment of Cancer, Goldens Lead the Way. The principal investigators are Dr. Jaime Modiano, Dr. Matthew Breen, and Dr. Sh Shurston Lindblad Toe. And Dr. Modiano is at University of Minnesota, Dr. Breen is at North Carolina State, and Shurston Lindblad Toe is at the Broad. This grant was funded for $1,061,137. Lymphoma and hemangiosarcoma are major health problems in golden retrievers, causing suffering and premature death. Doctors Modiano, Breen, and Lim Blateau have identified several regions of the genome that contain genetic heritable risk factors for lymphoma and hemangiosarcoma in golden retrievers. They've identified tumor-specific mutations that occur, that occur recurrently in both cancers, 
some of which are linked to duration of remission when treated with standard of care. Results indicate that a few heritable genetic risk factors account for as much as 50% of the risk of these cancers. And doctors Modiano, Breen, and Lynn Blateau believe that there is potential to develop tests and strategies for DNA tests that can predict risk for individual dogs as well as manage risk across the population as a whole. The expected deliverables of the Golden's Lead the Way grant are that both the inherited risk factors and tumor mutations will point to pathways that will inform the development of new targeted therapies. Precise mutations for the heritable genetic risk factors will be determined and validated from a large population of Goldens in the U.S. and in Europe that these investigators will be able to develop a robust risk prediction tool and accompanying DNA test. They will be able to identify and characterize tumor mutations and study their relationship to the heritable risk factors, the tumor pathogenic mechanisms, and disease outcomes, and ultimately transfer insight gained from this golden retriever study to all dogs that are at risk of lymphoma and hemangiosarcoma. The next grant that we funded through the CHF-GRF collaborative um, effort was Grant 1918, Discovery of Biomarkers to Detect Lymphoma Risk, Classify for Treatment, and Predict Outcome in Golden Retrievers. The principal investigator is Dr. Jeffrey Bryan. He's at University of Missouri in Columbia. And co-investigators on the study are Dr. Ann Avery, she's at Colorado State, and Dr. Heather Wilson at Texas A&M. We funded this grant for $404,813. The focus of the Bryan Collaborative Grant is epigenetics, and this is an emerging area of importance in cancer. Epigenetics is defined as stable and heritable patterns of gene expression that do not entail any alterations to the original DNA sequence. Most commonly, epigenetics defines DNA methylation. Epigenetic DNA methylation changes clearly underlie development of lymphoma in humans, but have really been evaluated minimally in the dog. And the belief is that these methylation changes occur so early in the process of cancer formation that they could serve as biomarkers of risk, allowing medicine or diet to ultimately prevent lymphoma development in Goldens before it happens. There are expected deliverables for this epigenetics grant. They, these investigators will identify DNA methylation changes in lymphoma that are not present in normal cells in order to develop biological markers of each class of lymphoma and hopefully identify new therapeutic targets for affected dogs. They will identify tumor initiating cells, sometimes referred to as, as, as cancer stem cells, in lymphoma biopsies to characterize their stem cell-like properties by surface markers and DNA methylation changes. They believe that the markers from each of these can be combined, correlated, and translated into biomarkers of risk to be used for diagnosis and prognosis to advance our understanding and prevention and management of lymphoma in all dogs, not just Goldens. For more information and to support these grants, please visit us online at www.akcchf.org forward slash 2014 grants.